Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. Hello everybody and welcome to oh, Lady Journey. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Mm. We, just, welcome, we, welcome. <laughs> we bullshit and we go in. I was just thinking, what if we just talked the whole time and did not introduce Julia? We just Julia. never <laughs> introduce <laughs> it. <laughs> like, is, is this like, happening? Is it, are we off? just mean to you. on the wall. <laughs> We like to wait until we say something really heinous, and then we're like, welcome to Lady Journey. <laughs> <laughs> but no, everyone, thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. Yeah, like don't, and subscribe. don't leave us. No, don't. <laughs> please, don't leave us. No, listen, how about what if, what if, instead of, um, go, you know, you watch the podcast, you love it, as you do, you take mm. the share button. You send it mm. to one friend. Mm. If everybody chain sends mail. it, is this, yeah. a Lady Journey chain mail. And if you, you send it to 10 good friends, fortune. yeah, you will not get a disease. <laughs> You will never get diabetes if you send this to 10 people. You might still get a different disease, but you yeah. won't. there's a certain disease you won't get yeah. if you share. I'm yes. only in charge of one disease, yeah. and it's diabetes. <laughs> Speaking of diseases, you have one. You're, yes. you're good. You're good. You're good now. I love. I was thinking it would be fun to have Julia on because we all have so many like memories of the scene. Don't you think that's a fun t- Oh, oh yeah. I mean oh even God. just yeah, we were just talking about it and it feels now that it's been so long, we've been at it for years, we're old as hell. Ooh. And there's so many people where it's like, Remember that guy? Yeah. What's he doing now? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. I know we so we went to Julia's show last night, uh, A Tale of Two Titties. Mm. It was fantastic. Great Thank show. You. How Thank amazing. Yes. How amazing. The last time we had you on was only like eight months ago. I think we had you like December. This was when you were like kind of putting the show together and now we see the finished product or you know you're kind of like workshopping it so mm-hmm. it's like it's a work in progress but it's to a point where it does feel like it's a full thing and it's fucking great yeah Thank last so per much. minute we're great uh, and you ended LPMs. on a sweet poignant moment and then buttoned it with humor again quick button yeah and you had Thank the you. visual element which was fantastic it's Thanks, so guys. good Thank yeah you. how does it feel it feels good last night was really fun and uh and it's you know motivating to keep doing it and uh yeah and the yeah. crowd was so great it was so nice to be how in many Brooklyn. times have you performed it now um f- six okay that was the sixth Good. oh my god yeah and i also just think like your journey what if you this is your defending the caveman and you do this for 10 years straight oh my god <laughs> yes <laughs> it absolutely could be and then that's great because you never have to write again yeah you've already that done all your writing. loaded yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i can't believe you've only done it six times it was so good for uh, only Thank you. yeah it's gonna co- it's gonna continue to grow and change it's gonna be great thank you um thank now you. what was the process so when did you start really putting you put pen to paper and then putting it on stage and then you got a director no, I don't have a director yet. I thought Katie Hartman was your director. She, well, she's well. I said good job to her last night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she has helped tremendously with it. She's like, as much. I mean, we're in two different cities, and yeah. So okay. it would be kind of, um, yeah, talking me through stuff, watching a tape, giving me notes, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, it was also very helpful to have her just sort of checking in. Um, and accountability just, yes kind of yeah, yeah. like how are you feeling about things and then i'm like i gotta do this that's really Shit. the most important part i think of just yeah. like having a deadline because i have been your friend since the whole time you've had your cancer journey from like the you diagnosis had a show together yeah we had years. a show oh yeah several we had shows a, yeah. We had our, oh my god Katie our bar gave show me cancer <laughs> He's a carcinogen. Oh you mentioned me in the show last night. Thank you. I know. You I, t- I told Kate. I was like, go up there. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's like, it's your moment. <laughs> and um, and I felt uh, so gratified. Oh, uh, because that is how it first started. Because Katie asked me to open for her for a weekend and go bananas in Cincinnati. Yep. And that was a month before the diagnosis. And so I was like, oh, I'll write new material. And then the diagnosis came. And then I was just started writing about stuff that was happening. And then it just kind of kept then the more once i needed i, I had breast cancer by the way everyone. oh yeah we oh, yeah. haven't talked about what you have, have breast cancer. Like, is it diabetes we're like you <laughs> talking about you diabetes guys guess it yeah i guess <laughs> and we'll send you a prize if you can guess <laughs> <laughs> you will get a lady journey sampler kit <laughs> well so yeah weekend, once i found out i was at like chemo and radiation it was like oh now i have more material though <laughs> yeah like, yeah was great. oh i think i could do it well, I, in that show. in that month since you had gotten diagnosed you already had about 15 minutes of material that was really organic and solid mm. and that's when you were like oh i think that this could turn into a yeah. one woman play and it's yeah. it's great when you're writing from a place of like to having stuff happen to you that is organically funny yeah and, but it's also painful and it but it's also a story you know i thought felt like you really nailed that last yeah. night on the show yeah we yeah. went through Thanks, the guys. 
whole lady journey of it. It was all. Yeah, it was yeah, truly a lady journey. And sure. as as someone, your best friend, who's <laughs> like lived lived through everything, I could see like, oh, you know, I was like, I wonder if she's gonna tell the shroom story. I wonder uh-huh. if she's gonna incorporate this part, like the part about the doctor. You know, knowing all these things that they yeah. as they kind of happened to you, and you kind of wove this tapestry of these different little vignettes, but they were all still one story. So it was really yeah. well done. Cool. Don't steal the idea, guys. <laughs> but we know each other from the trenches of stand up. Yeah. We used to have that bar show um, double wide. Had, yeah, and then we had two shows. Yeah, you had one in Brooklyn, right? And yeah. you also had one on in the East yeah. Village. Kind yeah. Of. Did you ever I, do our double wide one? That was the East Village I one. I did do the double it was wide bad. one. It yeah. was yes. bad every time. We <laughs> so never had a crowd. Fun. Yeah, it was hard to get a crowd. We would bark on the street in a giant pair of underwear, which we thought was. <laughs> I thought it was oh so God. funny. I, I think every it. week I would always think that maybe Katie would like forget, but then every week she would like show up at the giant underwear. She's like, "Come on, get on the corner, bitch! Get in this leg." People <laughs> love. Like, oh. We each they got in a leg of the underwear. I That's how from, big it was. I got it from GreatBigThings.com. <laughs> And um, <laughs> but people loved it. But then they would never come to the show. Nope, it just they would, it was like a beacon for unstable people. Yes. They would just be drawn to yes. us and be like, "I have a talent too." Yeah. <laughs> and our show yeah. usually the median uh, amount of audience that we had at that show was about five. Mm-hmm. Which is say it was about five to six mm-hmm. people. But how do people? I'm always amazed when I go to a show. I'm like, "How the fuck are you doing this? How do people yeah. do it? I've no tried clue to book shows, and I'm like, maybe this one will hit. Yeah." No, I don't know. I've I think you never. have to put. I think it's like actually not to bring up the ten x rule again. <laughs> my um the uh unstable uh, self help book that I'm reading, but I think I think that's what it is. I think it's like the amount that you think of like oh I'm doing a promo. Yeah. I think you have to do one hundred times that amount, and that's why people that are good at stand up usually aren't that good at producing shows because it's a completely different yes. skill set that you have yeah. to spend years developing. Yeah. yeah, or you hire yeah you hire a producer to do all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can put ten x. Yeah, ten x. I like yeah. Katie when you do. Um, that's like the book I'm reading, and then I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to hear this title. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the book I'm reading. Kill yourself until you're a success. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, and I'm almost there. I have a knife. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I, I'm reading self help books that are like the most unhelpful shit around. Did you read? Did you get any books? Did people any send you any books? How to deal with breast cancer? Uh, no, they didn't send books. They like, just sent here, those. You've got cancer, cancer and now you have to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That <laughs> homework. <laughs> um, no, no, no books. No, how to? I wonder. Are you into self help uh, stuff? You, do you know do what? Self-help? I'm smelling a book deal for you. Oh my god! There's a empty space happening. Right. God yeah. said, "Ha!" How to part two. <laughs> <laughs> how to beat cancer? Um, I. Yeah, I read. I'll. I like listening to little, you know, self help podcasty ooh, type things. Ooh, a little okay. five minute, little motivational thing. I love that. Um, yeah. When I was in, I just had a flashback to God's Head Ha because I was obviously on the speech team when I was in high school. <laughs> Is that a one man show? It's. Um, I think it's a one. No, I think it was just a book. Right? Okay. Was it Julia Sweeney? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. She, I, I watched know. her one woman show on. Um, HBO, it's about her getting cancer as well as somebody in her family dying, right? Yes, huh. and uh, like her brother died or and something. And I think yeah. Quentin Tarantino produced it or Whoa. something oh, weird. I, I never that. saw that. Maybe that, ma- that's what I'm thinking of, and I don't know if that's God said hot or not, but when I was on the speech team, she it was- She may have done two. Yeah. When I was on the speech team, it was like the most popular dramatic speech. So like every, every like sophomore high school girl would be like, ha ha, God, I'll get back at you. <laughs> What? That was all that it was like you weren't even doing a speech, you were just doing like a monologue, you know, but it was just like poor acting. Like, ha ha, look at me riding the waves of my, oh my life. God. I've got six months to live and I feel grand. It was fun. I just love that character of like overdoing theater. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if I was doing a one woman show, I would want to attempt to be that kind of character. Yeah. Did that ever cross your Smoking mind to be like, I'll have a moment where it blackout spotlight <laughs> on me. <laughs> yeah, no, like, but no, I, I should. Because <laughs> I, I had a hard time like with music getting the darker. serious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh the lights light change yeah. five six seven, i do like eight. and now it's like now i am a cancer cell and just like, oh my god yeah you know, like around the stage rolling around yes. I, you should yell out light change before you do it though. <laughs> light change sonia <laughs> i love it i love over dramatic now over-dramatic. did you do your own mm-hmm. illustrations 
I did. I those thought because I was like, tips, you're yeah. an illustrator. Mm-hmm. I yeah. felt like you I took advantage of that. I did. They were great. Thank the titties you. were really you. fun. Yeah, I think I want to have more illustrations in it. Maybe try to animate some stuff. Now, what's your merch? What's your well? People were saying that those tits need to be the merch. Okay. I okay. But I did I like have fun bags. I fun bags. Okay. Fun bags. I gotta get fun yeah. bags. Yeah. Fun bags. Oh yeah. Fun bags. Totes. Maybe. Yes. You're right. Brilliant. Tits. And a tote. Yeah. Fun bags. Fun bags. Yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I have a, an illustration that I did, or like art based on Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Titties. But yes. It's, it's two boobs instead of the buildings. And uh, so I've got, th- I've got that on a shirt, on a magnet. And, uh, and then I, I got love some it. Buttons. It lends itself to puns. Mm, there's it so sure many. Does. Oh, there's so, it's a world of puns. Mm. An ocean. Ain't it. I also like that you did the history of your original tits. Yes, that was really fun. Because I, I do feel like that needs to be touched upon. Yeah. 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 That actually, Ashley Book Roberts, when she saw the very first show, she was like, I, we got to hear more about the The, the OGs. It's the tale of two the titties. OGs. Let's hear more about yes. these two titties. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so what, what, what's going on like in your world with your health right now? Like, are you, are you still kind of in a space where you're like, I have to do scans for the rest of my life and that's a bummer. Like, yes. what's, what's like the sequel to mm. like Julia has cancer. And then now it's like, we're kind of in the second season of the mm. show now where it's like, Julia's doing a show about cancer and what's going on with that. I, the, the second season, not as exciting. It's just scans. <laughs> just going to the doctor. Just, just getting scans. Up on things. Um, but it's yeah, like kind of the epilogue, right? You're like but living in the epilogue of yeah. the story, I guess. So it's uh, not as often that, you know, not going mm-hmm. to the doctor all the time like I was, but just going still pretty regular, regularly and monitoring me, getting CAT scans, stuff like that. And just trying not to think of cancer coming back. Yeah. <laughs> it is a- as your friend is bringing it up on their podcast. <laughs> So what are you going to do? As we always mention it. <laughs> Where are you at? Before Kitty's like, so we can just like talk about anything today. And she's like, welcome to Lady Journey. Julia had cancer. Talk about it. <laughs> okay. Can I share something hilarious? When I stayed with Julia, I stayed with you back in October, right? And um, we were going to the weed store as we do when, we, when I'm always in LA. Yeah. I'm like, I have to get my, you know, I have to get my weed soda. It's like Willy Wonka's <laughs> factory in there. You're like, give me some purple nurples. I have anxiety. <laughs> um, but so we go and like, first of all i love like when when the when the weed shops first open you could go in and it would be like a like a stoned guy but who's also a scientist Uh he's very smart making recommendations he's like a weed sommelier but now it's just like a dude any dude can work there it's just like a stone dude so i'm like asking the dude about like stuff and he's like uh just stoned he's like i don't know we're like okay so then um, we go to the counter and something happened. I forgot, but you were like, you were like, I'm bald. And then you were like, I have cancer. No, I did. <laughs> like joking about it. And the guy was like, uh, uh, and he just got really oh, uncomfortable. And it was so fucking funny because it's like, what a hilarious superpower to just like joke about your cancer uh, and just make someone make uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. And I was like, That's what that guy Harsh is. Mellow. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yes. Think about that so stone hard. dude. <laughs> Oh my god! But it was like uh, well, so fucking great because it was like he fucking deserved that because he did not give me the information that I was, I was looking for a weed consultation, yeah. which I did not get. That's right. That that um, an- the, another time that you visited and we went to the place. Right? Was that wasn't that you? Yes, yeah. And the guy yeah. he was like a scientist and he yes. was being so helpful. And now and then the place we went to the other time. Yeah, it, it does feel like it's just kind of a job for like teenagers or college kids yeah uh, you just know? like I mean, you're like hi i need i want mints but i want and the guy's like oh, i don't know lady look, yeah. yeah did you look over there <laughs> yeah I'm like oh why is this 75 dollars yeah. then <laughs> yeah. and then they oh, ask for tips do they tips really? my ass yeah yeah, it, yeah. I'm livid about tips lately. Tipping at a oh. weed store where you Let's picked out your tips. own stuff. I mean, it's yeah. like, why Why do I have a personal shopper then? I just have yeah. like um, an 18-year-old man following <laughs> me around the store, like checking in. It's like, can I at least talk to my problems? Uh-huh. Talk to him about <laughs> my problems. My problems. <laughs> and one of my problems is that I talk to my problems. <laughs> <laughs> problems? <laughs> but- is that you? <laughs> I'm scared. Stay back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the tipping. Did you happen to see some guy made a video about how it's getting so ridiculous? Like everywhere you go, they just like flip that screen around asking for a tip. Yeah, it's so funny. Insane. After uh, ultrasound last time, I was on the upper tipping east. me for the ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> they turned it around and was like, "It's going to ask you a few questions." <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the photo of your baby is yeah. on. You're like, I got 20. <laughs> oh my God. No, we went to, I was like, oh, I think there's like a deli cafe around here. And we went there and the guy, I wasn't thinking. And it did ask for a tip and I just put it. Yeah. yeah. I just put it and that. Joe's like, no, you cannot. He, in front of this that. register <laughs> guy, he's like, you cannot tip this guy. He has not done anything. Ah, yeah. And the guy was like, I can't reverse it. And we were <gasps> like, you can reverse it. Whoa. I've Come done on. transactions before. If you, you can't reverse, reverse it, reverse you don't deserve a tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to get a tip for helping me. <laughs> but it was breakfast food. And I think I spent $40 between two people. Yeah. Like a bagel, coffee, and then wow. some eggs for Joe and a fruit. And it was it came out to that, and everything was self serve. That I was like, I cannot. I just did it yeah. automatically, and it didn't dawn on me right. that I just tipped a person that had nothing to do yep. with my dining experience. Yep. Yeah, and it's like it's yeah. I know that they're the if people's wages are low, and that's fucked up. But that's not our our wages are but also low. Like, yeah, a lot of times it's for wages that aren't even low. You know, it's like it's like people that are getting an hourly wage. Yeah, yeah. like tipping is like tipping culture is getting like weaponized against yeah. people that are like lower middle class, which is <laughs> right. us. Yes. I'm technically working poor. I'm, I I'm analyzed in my I live in poverty. <laughs> yeah, I'm in poverty, <laughs> and it's like I shouldn't even be buying an eight dollar iced coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a impoverished millennial, and yeah. I will. <laughs> well, that's that's what that's the thing that's so frustrating about tipping culture. It's like the margin is already so high, so it's like if you're not paying the worker enough out of the eight dollars that I'm paying for, for the froyo, right. dirty then water, I can't be the one yeah. who's held accountable exactly. for making sure that the. I love Adam. Adam ruins everything. Has that? It's like mm. at the, uh, you buy, you pay, and the stock boy eats. You know, yeah. you decide. <laughs> you decide if he gets food. Yeah. You know that it's just it's just on everything now, and it's so it's infuriating. It's so infuriating. It, is. it really is. It should you should do it on your phone after they ask you to tip. You're like great. Then I have a few questions to ask. Yeah, you. would yes. you tip me for yeah. tipping you? <laughs> yes. Because I'm also here in the world, <laughs> and I yeah. did more work than uh -huh. you did. I walked yeah. all the way over here. Well, yeah. It's the same thing that they did with Uber, where when people were like using Uber because it was so cheap, but then it was like you were tipping on it, but then they were like, well, the drivers aren't making any money. And it's like, well, now the drivers are making money, and then the company's making money, and then you're just mm. getting wrecked. You know, yeah. you're just getting wrecked on paying $85 Jesus. to go to the airport, which uh -huh. is like, why is my tr my drive to the airport is more expensive than my flight? Yeah. That's yeah. something's wrong. Yeah. And another thing, let's yeah. talk about flights now, charging us a bunch of money for seats. Oh, Give my me God. A break. Yeah. No, I love um, Spirit Airlines, which I continue to fly despite them annoying the hell out of hmm. me. Spirit Airlines does this thing where it's like, I guess you have to pay them. You have to pay for them to not be annoying because they get on there like, hey, everyone, <laughs> I hope you're excited to go to our final destination. <laughs> Hawaii. Just kidding. We're going to Indiana. <laughs> wah, wah. It's like, that's my home. That's my home, and you're insulting it. And you're like, like it's just like zings now on Spirit Airlines. It's like, uh, just stop. Stop with the branding. Roasting. They're just roasting us. Yeah, they literally said that. They're like, we're in Indiana. If this is your final destination, sorry. Oh, my it's like, God. Um, okay, I know I only paid $2 to be on this plane. And I'm wearing I, everything because I can't pack it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. how much does respect cost? How much does my own dignity cost? Is it 15 more dollars? Because I won't pay it. Uh, I'm still looking for a deal. <laughs> what uh, airline did you fly here? I flew Delta here. Ooh, I'm oh, I'm a Delta my God. girl. Uh, yeah, I love oh, Delta. I think my Delta. dad was a Delta yeah. boy, and so oh I'm a Delta you're girl. You're Delta. You're you like perks. Am, am yeah, I a perks. queen right now? The flight yeah. is leaving on time. <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm flying JetBlue going back, and I go to get a seat, and there's exit rows and middle seats, and the exit rows each seat $150. Oh, wild. One hundred and fifty dollars for wow. a middle seat in an exit row. Jet Blue used to be so classy. They used to be like, remember, remember years ago they were like, you can get as many chips as you want. Yeah, <laughs> we we keep the chips out, and now they're like, we do not have chips. <laughs> we are barely keeping this airline afloat. <laughs> And all the airline, all the snacks get smaller and smaller. It's just the tiniest little bags of the tiniest pretzels. I, I love know. it too. It's like not even. They used to have like the hundred calorie packs. Now it's like thirty calories of cheez its <laughs> for a six hour flight. So oh man, on my flight, uh, I on my flight out here it was because I came from Cincinnati to here, and so it was the two seats, and I was sitting next to this man who had his elbow 
on the the men they always take the armrest. Are they? But he middle, was. Was he middle seat? No, he was a window. Because I've heard middle seat is middle allowed seat to does get, get both armrests. Yes, I fully I did not support know that. that. Oh, I had heard that too. And I get yeah, it because I'm not middle, fighting it. And that sucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I fully support that. And even if he had his arm, but his arm was. His elbow was getting into my space. Yeah. And I felt very. And then at one point he like leaned forward to get something. And I just like put my elbow like on half of the armrest. And he like went to put it back up and kind of like realized and slipped it off. And I was like, oh, it's passive aggressive (laughs) arm (laughs) wrestle at the (laughs) airplane. And then I was like, I don't even want my arm on this armrest, but I will keep it here. It's out of principle, sir. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Sir, you've overstepped. (laughs) Yes, I know there is something about like masculine energy does tend to take up more space and feel entitled to it in a way which is infuriating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I uh, I have seen like a TikTok video of a uh, don't you? It's weird when that plane window cuts two aisles. Yes, what's up with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, plane designers, we got some notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or like you get i had one recently where i got no window which is so funny it's like window seat you're just looking at the wall like <laughs> the saddest flight of your life like i can't wait to go to new york city hey. like craning your neck to see the window like of the seat behind yeah. you and you're like can i look out yours i've just got the wall <laughs> you, should, like, you should draw this city on that part <laughs> by the time they land you're like <laughs> new york <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, lo- I I don't even open the window on the flight anymore because I want people to think that I'm a frequent flyer. I'm like, oh, yes. yeah, I don't I'm, need to look down <laughs> anymore. Oh my God. I, I, the sky, I get it. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Now, do you guys, if it's really bright, do you you close it when people leave it oh. open? It drives me crazy. It's I like, leave it down because yeah. I feel like I'm going to have less issues with it down yes and then occasionally i'll do three well, quarters sure. to you gotta get a peep. Just peep yeah <laughs> yeah you see the clouds you have to peep do a little peep we're above <laughs> the clouds are you kidding that's a rare opportunity i love to peep but i did <laughs> i wonder okay. what the clouds are up to right now i know well it's like sometimes so I don't want to remember that I'm in like a metal tube that's hurtling through the air because that's when I start. You get like turbulence when you when you have the window down. The turbulence is like ooh fun like a ride. When you have it up, it's like we're fucking yeah. we're not gonna make it. Do you know what we're doing right now? We're in a metal tube. Whose idea was this? It does feel insane. <laughs> and I know, yeah, turbulence is normal, but it doesn't feel like it. It's I, like, we shouldn't be bouncing. It's <laughs> wild. Every time there's turbulence, I go c- catastrophic immediately. <laughs> I'm like praying. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm holding on to yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's scary, uh, though, but somebody had said it's basically if you put the plane in jello, in the middle of it, and jello jiggles, wow. but it's never going to fall out of the jello oh. because of the air pressure so it oh. kind of took away a little bit of the fear of turbulence you're just like huh we're just jiggling in, in jello, jello well, right now i'm now. definitely gonna open the window and take a peek let's see <laughs> oh all this god. jello we're going yeah. through what i had never heard that that's that is oh my god that put me at ease actually yeah it was an huh. explanation of turbulence of like oh. why you shouldn't really be nervous it's just the Oh. Both air pressures from top and bottom are equilibrating, but you you do jiggle in jello sometimes. You, you jiggle, jiggle in jello. jello. You jiggle in jello. Oh my god! Put That's that on a bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now, what's worse than the plane crashing when the person next to you talks to you at the beginning of the flight and I, you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh my god, I have to set yeah. a boundary now." <laughs> oh, it's her. I haven't had that happen in a while, but I have had had I've had that happen to me, and it's horrific yes. it's so horrific you, because it gets to the point where like either you're just going to be drained of every life force that you have or you're gonna be like stop yes stop carol just stop I, and that, yeah. I do that now i feel like when i was younger i would you just kind of listen to them and then i was like no never again and now i'm just like well i'm gonna put my music in and i just yeah immediately yeah <laughs> yeah I, See, I'm going away now. I prepare myself for that speech yes. a lot of the times to be like this i can't do this yep, right now yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come i sit down with the headphones in yeah, yeah. i love that you practice i in have the no more room yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i oh did a God. i did a self-tape audition the other day and it wanted you to do 
a 30 second conversation with the person next to you on a plane what they just wanted to see you doing that and they're like it can they said right and it said it can be going well or not well and so my conversation was me trying to put headphones in just going oh yeah yeah your parents live there that's really nice oh what was that (laughs) (laughs) classic (laughs) classic Mm. i love it and then they will just keep talking to you while the headphones are in and you're like sorry Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm gone and then you you just close your eyes can you tell you're like you're pretending you're dead. <laughs> I am dead. Just cartoonishly get, snoring. Get yeah. the defibrillator. <laughs> Julia, can you tell the story about when you um, auditioned, you booked the prune juice ad? Oh because my I, gosh. I, I, that, I'm not to pimp you and put you on the spot, but I think that is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I didn't even audition for it. They you booked d- me off my headshot. They said, <laughs> this girl <laughs> drinks prune juice. <laughs> So then, I mean, that is a lottery ticket. We're I talking think, about yes. that. Like, you just fucking your face says prune juice. Yeah, I go. I <laughs> never book auditions, and then they just say, "Come do this prune juice commercial." And then if I had auditions, I probably wouldn't have booked it because I think at the shoot, it's I want to just be talking and not. But this was like just drinking prune juice and smiling kind of thing. Yeah, like, I'm in the kitchen. You know, it's kind of different vignettes of like people being happy, and then it's me in my kitchen, and I'm just getting. A, pouring a glass of prune juice at the counter As and you do. drinking it and just being so happy. <laughs> and so there's like, you know, 10, 12 people making this happen. They're all watching me and I like go and I do it and I take a sip. And then you're just, the director's giving you these notes like, no, sip it like this, turn it like this, smile, sigh, and then a smile. And you just feel like a fucking idiot because like you can't robot. smile and yeah. take a sip. Yeah. I'm just like, I got this, I can do this. I don't know how to drink juice. <laughs> <laughs> like, even in the actual commercial, you can tell that I'm like, <laughs> nervously oh, drinking then, prune juice <laughs> and then the prune juice was tasty and at one <laughs> after one of the takes the director said you don't have to take such big sips because i was chugging that prune juice and you they had to keep refilling the it they're like juice. phil can you fill up the glass again she's just downing it <laughs> and then you had the worst diarrhea of your life you're like it works <laughs> Oh, oh my god i love tasty. it i love it i've never mm. had prune juice i ha- i like prunes though yeah. i think i'd like it i've never I've, had it i it's like good. prunes prunes yeah, are such a oh they have such a unique flavor but you cannot eat more than three <laughs> yes we've t- yes it, the dried fruit debacle dried oh. fruit. and still even still i know it will give me like the worst gas that i've had in my life and i'll be in public like um just like poisoning my <laughs> friends and family but still i'll be like but i want to i want to have five more <laughs> i know i can't stop it's, so it's a weird oh, texture so it's got good. seeds in it it's <laughs> chewy it's i love um, i love the trader joe's dried mango yeah i love oh dried mango God, i love mm. mango I, I love fresh mango that's been my nighttime snack fresh. i just oh, that's nice. peel a couple and then i just put it on a fork and i just nibble it in a bowl while i'm watching the jared subway documentary <laughs> Oh I'm God, in the middle of that, that guy. but we are actually we hate the Rochelle woman more. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she then the horrific awful. child molester. Oh, she is, that was the one that was kind of like dating him to. She was a radio host and she was newly divorced and then met him and they kind of connected, but nothing physical yet. And then one day he leans over and he goes, "Aren't oh. middle schoolers hot?" Yes. And she, she's she was like, the "One." And then she instead of doing anything, just like. I'm going to just investigate on my own. On my own. And the <laughs> FBI is like, you could go to prison. <laughs> no. and then, but instead, we, yeah. you owe us to keep doing this Ugh. under our regulations. And then we've and only the gone to the... P- fucked up. Yeah. And the, you're like, this woman is wild. Yeah. yeah I and know. And also like, inappropriate in herself. And we were like, what is she saying to him? Because she's like, he'd yes. be like 13, 14. She's like, what about nine or 10? Yeah, those yeah. conversations like, were gross. Ugh. And she would be like, sometimes I had to have calls with him two or three times a night it's like don't pick yeah, up <laughs> once a night is enough I like to i couldn't set any boundaries because he was a molester and she just talked to him every single night for three years it's like why don't you just do it for six weeks like you're good yeah you don't need to keep being like tell me more about the nine-year-olds jared uh, yeah. there was something yeah we i was like oh i think i know why you got divorced in the first place <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i think i'd watch like, a documentary about her and yeah. just to see that like <laughs> like for somebody making like, it about me <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's like she would act so devastated but she never showed tears that we just huh. felt like it was we felt like she was reveling in the oh, whole definitely. situation i'm gonna oh, be the one that's gonna out him even though it's it. gonna like my Destru- kids are messed up because yeah. of all every, i'm ignoring them and i'm bringing this guy around and yeah. like it's like I, w- I was like what happened to the daughter did she die and it was like oh she just didn't want to be a part yeah. of this yeah, fucked yes. up documentary that's exploiting did you see the, the part mom her co-worker was like i knew something was changing and he's just like a 
old rock star yeah, DJ look. Guy, who, yeah. And uh, she, he's like, her demeanor was so weird. And then one day I asked her if everything's fine, and she's like, Jared Fogle is <laughs> fucking kids, and I'm in the middle of the investigation. I have to go. People are after me. And I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. I want to say that to anybody. <laughs> is like, are you okay? And then just spew <laughs> the <laughs> wildest <laughs> nonsense yeah. ever. Yeah. And then the reenactments, they had her in like, you know, she's on the window yeah. being like this. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that it just, it <laughs> took away from so the funny. seriousness of, like the monster of Jared yes. Fogel. I know. Like, it's like you have a reenactment where we have a guy who like kind of looks like Jared, but not really. <laughs> it's like, I don't believe that that's him. I love uh, that it's set in Indiana because that's my hometown. Like yes. any documentary, I'm like back home again. <laughs> I was like, we're in Katie country. Oh, my God. Those are my people. (laughs) But I'm watching another one right now, which is also on HBO, also set in Indiana. It's called The Curious Case of Natalie Grace. And it is the most Indiana people you have ever seen in your life. It's about this woman was a little person. She was adopted. She had some kind of psychosis. Mm. And the family suspected that she was actually much older. And then, you know, it, it. it's a wild ride. I recommend it. But the the outside people in the documentary are like, well, I saw her and she was small. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, it's delightfully Indiana. It's just like, oh, well, I, well I, I would not let her into my place. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's fun. It's a wild ride. Mm. Oh, so where, where's your next out. stop? Where are you taking the show to next? Um... Uh, no pressure. Oh, <laughs> Atlanta. Oh, I, I, Atlanta. I, uh, Nashville. Broadway. No, Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> Nashville. Go, Julia, go. <laughs> um, Nashville, August 12th is the next one. So Ooh, hopefully there'll be some stuff before Nashville's then. Nashville's going to be a great nice. spot yeah, for that. That'll be, fun. that'll be awesome. Yeah. Now, I, I like to get way ahead of myself mm-hmm. and cause pressure on you. Mm-hmm. But oh, have you thought yes. about reaching out to Planned Parenthood? Mm. They do a lot of charity work and shows and stuff like oh. that. I'm just thinking... This yeah. could be a route. I haven't, but I should. Yeah. Yeah. And I should reach out to like breast cancer organizations. Yes. And yeah. Like Rosie O'Donnell. Remember Rosie? Didn't Rosie have breast cancer? I remember she used uh, to always do stuff yeah. on her show. I think her, at least her mom died of it. Okay. I think. I remember at least she did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Rosie so was she's always. she's legit. <laughs> she had like, she would have like um, every year on the show, it would have like these big like titty um titty things and one year she had titty cookies and i was like that looks good yeah that's what inspired me yeah sugar cookies with icing Ugh. is there anything better nothing mm, like the professionally made yes. ones that are like oh the my god yummy yummy, yummy. Uh, so yeah. good so um, good i also love that you addressed breast cancer awareness merch <laughs> yes oh my god, oh my god. why does it have to be so shit. bad yeah, it's so bad it's I like don't dollar know. store shit yeah i don't know it's, i don't know who's wearing that there, i mean i guess there are some cancer survivors Why can't that they it do be make nice? that i don't know i love like it i know it's like just the most made in china like crap where it's like we we just did an episode of stuff of just like making crap in china is like huh. the most horrific thing for the planet and for the people that are being exploited yeah. you know it's like yeah but we need something that says titties on right, it yeah know? and it's the yeah there were there's so much i mean it's so much pink stuff for breast cancer and so much stuff that said keep going yeah. okay but like delta <laughs> yeah like delta every year during um october they give you like the free headsets and people are just like throwing them yeah. into the sea it's like is this yeah. good is and this then, helping and then they, with like the corporate stuff yeah in october breast cancer awareness month all these companies wearing pink everything and it's like all that money that went towards making all that pink shit like just give that to you cancer research for your play. <laughs> uh, or yeah. people that can't Personally. afford the medical treatment yeah. for yep. all yeah. that yeah. It's so i'm much. sure they love seeing all this it's a waste it's a big waste like, yeah. i hate everything mm-hmm. <laughs> i really do it's so like disappointing yeah. where you're like i don't this is so stupid yeah it's so stupid it's, yeah. it's so much stuff now i'm listening to a podcast right now which i'm loving it's called scamanda you know i love a pun <laughs> i know i love a pun <laughs> but this this is right up your alley julia because it's about a woman who is pretending to have cancer stolen so valor scamming Lady the community stolen valor. yeah and i love it because i'm like now i suspect you um <laughs> No, but it's so, it's so, it's such a great scam because it's like, she's at the church, you know, she's like, and I'm feeling sick again. And people are like giving her all this stuff, giving her all these treats. Man. And you're like, damn, that is the perfect scam. Damn. There's so actually, I like to let people know that I have cancer now. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of people that do that. And there's somebody, really? I met somebody, um, Annie Bernstein, and she's going to be starting a pod. She's working on a podcast with somebody 
who he had cancer when he was like 18 and then since then he's been like reading about all the people that fake cancer and so their okay. whole podcast is going to be about that there's a lot oh of people my God. Do it. i think i'm gonna love it yeah i love scams because yes. no one gets like hacked up in the woods <laughs> and that's almost yeah like you sent me that me podcast now. about that woman where each episode is a different story about that same girl who kept faking stuff and she she also said she had cancer man but she also said that she had she had a lot of was it a beauty an influencer there's a beauty influencer in australia that was doing shit like that huh. oh i love australian podcasts they're always like <laughs> i i was listening to an australian mike murder. was telling me yeah you're the recaps of it oh it was so funny because it was like uh, the first serial killer in australia but like they're so naive it was the 90s and they were like well i guess he came in through the front door which we never locked and it's like <laughs> oh no wonder he just huh. killed everyone in the oh town yeah and then they like try to sentence him they only gave him 30 years and he like uh, stabbed three girls to death in the throat and they gave him 30 years Whoa. yeah and what? they're like well we, he could probably be rehabbed <laughs> in the future it's like oh my god what is wrong with you guys <laughs> <laughs> about what he's done yeah hey, he's sorry, sorry. Yeah. he's like threatening the female guard in the prison telling her he's gonna stab her and she's like oh i didn't quite feel safe oh my it's like, god yeah something's wrong <laughs> something's wrong with your country it's so it's fun when you listen to something that you're like oh i guess i'm pro death penalty mm -hmm. oh, okay. i had no idea mm -hmm. I had yeah no idea. i think you should voice uh, an australian character in a cartoon i do it's my um shout out to my old roommate kelly festuka that's oh, why so I, I developed my australian mm -hmm. um voice uh, oh, no. uh, oh my god she would let's get maccas <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's mcdonald's that's what oh. they love it let's have a let's have a pash oh they like to ni <laughs> yeah nickname everything mm. they have Down so many the words walk about uh, the walk about <laughs> The walk about. Every uh, yeah, everything is a not the name that it was originally oh, give like a bathroom like the pee pee poop poo. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to rinse off in a flim flame and get a flum in a sheener. That was Irish. What I think. I'm gonna do a number two. You're like okay. <laughs> Uh, they're weird uh they're weird <laughs> sarah <laughs> well it feels like yeah the further you are away from the queen the weirder you get mm. yes, yes yes i know they are kind of out there in the middle of nowhere sorry that's my siri what's <laughs> a pop hopping off <laughs> would you ask siri siri is that off. you <laughs> <laughs> i but scammers are always like fascinating because i'm like how do they think they're going to get caught. Yes. The lie is yes, too that's big. That's bonkers. That's what I think too. Yeah. And they still won't own it. Yeah. Ever. It's actually an impressive quality. Yeah. Yes. I'm I like, mean, look at like George Santos. Like he just keeps doubling down on stuff, and it's yeah. like it's almost so delusional. It's impressive, and yeah. I respect it in a yeah. weird way. Like uh, even Alaria Baldwin. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! It's the so amount fun to watch. of belief you have to have Alaria. in yourself—it's like the delusion. I admire it. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to live in that world. I know. Yeah. It's like no one can hurt you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my God, Elaria. What's, Elaria. what's new with Elaria? Elaria. Well, she. I guess Alec, Alec. Um, <laughs> some like a lot of when he was getting uh, I think he was getting sentenced or whatever mm. with the shooting mm -hmm. that was happening in the movie right. she came to the forefront but we felt like it was a PR stunt. they had a yeah. bad year bad yeah. year yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awkward year because yeah, she was it's like yeah I'm sure it's annoying that people were at their door or whatever but then yes. she, she made that very like my family is not safe with yeah. everyone coming by who <laughs> 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 yeah. was that's a great accent and yeah. then they would take <laughs> she was during very, these like, moments weird <laughs> Instagram photos that you're like not now huh. <laughs> Don't, it was like yoga in the kitchen, and oh he's God. just like staring at her. Weird. I love it. I Celebrities love are the most fucked up people. Weird. It's so they funny. They are so out of touch. Yes. Yeah, when they do their own social media, and they don't have like a PR person like managing a front, it's like, oh, <laughs> you guys are just wild. Just yeah. running wild. Who, re remember that lady that wrote the poem to Putin during the, yes. the beginning of the invasion if of Ukraine. If I was your mother, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't yes. be hurting people. It's like, oh my God, are you, are, do you have kids? Because I'm upset. Yes. Oh my God, yeah. that's so great. I know. And, and who could forget when the celebrities were singing to stop COVID? Oh my oh, God. Imagine. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you think uh, they regret that or are they proud of their work? Sarah Silverman was one of the people doing that. I oh, know. Sarah. But do you think, if you got Gal Gadot texted you and mean like mm. if you were to do this where you're like, what is Gal Gadot? One hundred percent, yes. <laughs> I would be up there like, <laughs> imagine all the. Yeah. Yes, I know you're so right. 
<laughs> Gal Gadot, Superwoman? You're going to say no to Superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's worth the public ridicule. Wonder Woman. I oh, get yeah, that way. Like, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, when they're like, what? Who are these girls that keep dating him thinking that they're the one? And then yeah. I'm like, I, I say would, that. And sure. then I'm like, I wonder if I would turn down right? Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah I don't even yeah. like, like well, him. I'm different, yeah. even yeah. though I'm 45. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the, the one oldest. that changes him. Yeah, you'd be the oldest girl he's ever dated. Yeah. Maybe when he's 80. <laughs> then he'll be into it. Yeah, because he's still, has he still not gone above 25? No. Yeah, no. My zipper is unzipped. Oh, my zipper is unzipped. We got to start over. Oh my God, X, Y, Z. I have gave me the knowing glance. <laughs> my theory about Leo is that, and I feel like this is a theory that everybody probably pushes out. Doesn't it feel like he might be gay and that's a beard? Because Ooh. why would you only date somebody up to 25 and have it no? Like, it just feels mm. like his team reaches out. Like, can you get him a model? Yeah. And it's great yeah. for her career because it puts her name on the map. Yes. Um, She's in the tabloids huh. and everyone will probably follow her on Instagram and then it'll kick off her career. <sighs> and then he just gets to have this it's life so that he has. Yeah, it's so interesting because it's like almost now being gay is good for your career. Yeah. So it's like you could, you, you, he would set himself apart and like open up a whole new world. Yeah. Like imagine the revenant if he was gay would have added so <laughs> many layers. <laughs> that would have been such a better film. <sighs> Oh my yeah. God. There was like Leonardo a sexual DiCaprio tension gay. between him, him and, and the Tom bear. Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Well, we do have to wrap up. We're oh at time now. Well, well, Julia. Just throwing that dangerous theory out there. Throwing That's that dangerous theory, theory out there. I bet Kate Spread Winslet knows the truth. I Spread bet. Yeah. You know? I love Kate Winslet. Me too. I, I love too. her in that um, that terrible show that was on HBO where she just had that awful that terrible. awful Philly trash Mare of accent. Easttown was great. Man, oh, oh. Mare of the show was great. Her accent was terrible. Yes. Well, but I'll she nailed that very specific. My sister in law's from that area, and I was like, "Is it really that bad?" She's like, "Oh, it's awful." I was like, yeah. "How is this? Everybody has horrific yeah. trauma Going. in their families." Damn. Going down yeah. to the harbor. Yeah, that was so rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Julia, where can everybody follow all along with um, keeping up with your journey? Oh, I'm at uh, Hey Julia Johns on Instagram and Twitter. All right, <laughs> boring. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> follow and her a, buy her cancer merch okay mm. everybody yeah maybe you'll come to the people's towns yeah yeah if, yeah. You, if you want that to happen there's a kickstarter you cannot google julia john's kickstarter oh, yeah donate to the to kickstarter me, uh get this show donate one dollar one dollar per titty so two dollars yeah, don't yeah. Do don't donate to the Komen. is that it yeah 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 Fuck put common. it towards julia seriously because yeah. i will do a live show and i'll find a cure for breast cancer actually yes. by doing that show you're spreading awareness in uh, it's a huge Humor. awareness campaign yes it allows yeah. women it to laugh about the situation you know like find yeah. relief in that yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. Spreading yeah. Fun. yeah. you're spreading and people fun people have told me they've because of either the show or posting stuff they're like i went and got a mammogram because of that so. yeah absolutely yeah check your titties hashtag Check your titties. Everybody, thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe to Lady Journey. Bye. Don't delete us.